Hello, and welcome to Insightful Conversations with your host, Three Principles Practitioner, Del A.D. Jones. Join her each week as she welcomes some of the world's leading Three Principles teachers and practitioners who share how this understanding has dramatically improved the quality of their lives and the lives of those they work with. I'm very excited to have Michael Fall with me today. Michael is a solution-focused coach certified through the Canadian Centre for Brief Coaching and accredited with the International Coach Federation. These days, Michael works primarily with HR executives to help them be more coach-like and with individuals from all walks of life who want to live lives of effortless thriving, not merely surviving. He is currently hosting two new upcoming programs, From Surviving to Thriving and Journey to Coaching Mastery, the latter with his friend and colleague, Dominic Scavidi. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm thrilled, thrilled that we're finally able to do this. Um, Indeed. Believe, believe it or not, I am going on hiatus for a, a couple of months, I think. So this is the last one in this series. So I'm oh. glad, we, glad we fitted you in. Well, I feel very, very fortunate then. Thank you, Del. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> So, yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit about your journey. I know that you've had um, multiple lifetimes before coming <laughs> coming to coaching um, from the grounding of the three principles. So give us a little bit about a background about what, what led you up to finding the principles and coaching from this modality. Yeah, wow. Um, I guess the, the I guess the, the truth is the story starts um, back when I was about 15 years old and uh, I was obviously still living at home at that point, but things at home were in, in quite a bit of disarray. And my mother handed me um, a red psychology textbook and it's forever in my mind. And at the time I was trying to figure out, you know, whether or not I was going to stay in school, what direction I was going to go. And she hands me this book. And that's kind of where it all started. Um, since then, I mean, I've worked as an educational assistant, I've worked as a PSW, I've worked as a supply teacher, um, you know, uh, I've worked in construction, I've run my own martial arts school. And then th this sort of gets us close to being up to date now. Mm -hmm. And in 2006, I opened a CrossFit gym, which was the one of the first 10 in Canada. That's kind of the journey up to um, coaching and then we're coaching from this modality and then in 2015 um i'll keep this quick a, a good friend of mine who i used to train at the gym he's actually quite a bit younger than i am but i trained him as a young man or as a, well actually from childhood into teenagehood at the gym for free because mm. he's a neighbor and right around hmm, the second week of september in 2015 i get an email from him saying hey you might like this check this out will consider it sort of a an equalization for all of the training that you gave me. And lo and behold, one of the things he had sent was uh, Sid's Long Beach le lectures. Mm -hmm. um, along with, uh, I think, a, a, a George Pransky book, a Michael Neal book, and a Jack Pransky book. So, of course, I'm, I'm listening to this Sid audio. Five minutes into this Sid audio, I am just uh, alternating between laughing and tears. Wow. So it was it was an incredibly powerful moment. I mean, I, I was to say that at this stage my life was in disarray would be an understatement. I won't bore you with all the details of what I was doing, but suffice it to say the person I am now is quite a bit different than then. So yeah, so so what what spurred it on was um you know this experience of whatever Sid said in the first five minutes of the Long Beach lectures, and I've gone back over the Long Beach lectures countless times with a fine tooth comb, mm -hmm. the first five minutes, there's nothing there. <laughs> like, it's like, what, what happened? Where did this come? So no idea. So something within the first five minutes set me off. And, uh, and I, and, and I remember thinking, um, well, the cleaner version is, oh my goodness, I've been making it up all along. Yeah. And I knew it with such clarity. I, I knew it as a fact. Um, and essentially, in that split second, I, 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 I became a different person. So patterns of behavior fell away. All of my relationships changed. 
um, I knew in that moment that I was done in the gym industry, that I had gone as far as I could. I, I for some reason I still, well, I know why I stayed, you know, out of fear of doing something new, mm -hmm. but I stayed in the gym industry for another four years before I finally got out. But it was in that moment where, I mean, there was just so much clarity that, that things didn't have to be they were the way they were and that whatever it was whatever experience that i had just gone through was available to anyone if if it could happen for me it could happen for anyone mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of the backstory of how i got into it um that's yeah. so um <laughs> profound um <laughs> you know um, i certainly wasn't like that <laughs> it took me a little i had all those yeah buts yeah but doesn't apply here doesn't apply here oh, so, well <laughs> <laughs> did you have a few of those as well <laughs> well I, to, to to round the story out a little bit uh, yeah my my walking on clouds lasted for about eight months mm -hmm. right it, it was really quite it was quite an experience and it lasted it, it had it had some longevity and then and then of course it crashed. It, it started to fall away a little bit. I started to come back down to earth at which point, you know, I doubled down in my pursuit from the intellect. <laughs> I read everything. I, I, you know, did this program Did this person did this program mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, really, really made an effort to recapture. Um, and, and I'm fairly confident that in my desire to recapture, I was actually keeping what I had seen at arm's length. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, there, there's there's something that uh, I heard in an early Sid tape, and I have I haven't been able to find it again, unfortunately. But it is there. I'm not making this up. <laughs> but to paraphrase it, um, the way that I paraphrase it what is: once you touch God, there's nothing left to do. Mm -hmm. So I had this experience. Um, you know, whatever it was, however, I, I mean, I can't really describe it, but I had this experience and what I saw in my efforting around going deeper into it uh, was that I wasn't being patient. I wasn't allowing it to grow. So I had touched something and rather than sort of gently nurturing it and, 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 and being kind to it, I tried to, um, I tried to keep it front and center. Right. So after that, roughly, it was roughly eight months. So, it, you know, at that point, it starts to wane a little bit and I start panicking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually wrote a little piece about how difficult it was to come down off of this high. And it was then when I when I started looking and it was just recently, actually. Um, well, recently in the last 2015. So probably about 2017, 18, I found this quote. And as I said, it's, it's basically, uh, you know, once you touch it there's nothing left to do mm -hmm. and that was so liberating it was so freeing that there are actually not that there isn't stuff to do or there isn't an exploration there but the tone of the exploration changed it went from i mean i've been a seeker man since i was 15 as long as i can remember mm -hmm. and that fell away so any exploration that i was now doing sort of post 2017 was for the joy of it and not because I was trying to do something, mm -hmm. not because I was trying to get back to something. It was, it was purely for, purely in the allowance or, or my best effort at allowing whatever I had touched to become more and, mm -hmm. and to have that happen organically. Yeah, I, I love what you're pointing to. And I, I, I do, you know, as I, I joke, I mean, I, I, I had, I saw something clearly, um, but, sure. there, but it wasn't as sort of profound or life-changing as you described yours. But I often find that people get into this sort of, I had an insight, where's the next one? You know, <laughs> like there's this, there's this sort of almost like not dissatisfaction with what you felt. It was just so profound. They want more and more. And then you can get into that sort of, um, sort of searching and acquiring and not being happy with just as much as what you saw being enough. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Del, that, um, <clears throat> that for some reason, you know, or, you know, as we come back down to earth, suddenly what we've experienced isn't enough anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's almost like a, like a drug addict who gets a high yeah. 
and then the high goes away and then you're chasing the high again you're wanting to get back to that place and it's like you kind of forget that you didn't do anything to get to the place <laughs> right well yeah. how, did, how did that experience happen well i have no exactly. idea what were you doing i wasn't doing anything it just happened and yeah. yet and yet we have this it, it's almost innate that we chase after the feeling once we it, it's almost like there's a fear of losing it so yeah. we chase it and that just kind of keeps it out here you know yeah it's so interesting yeah. It is interesting. It's it, yeah, because I'm I the way I feel about the principles, quite honestly, having chased and chased and chased for years was is this incredible feeling of like, if this is as much as I see, this is enough. It's life changing mm. enough. So um, but that doesn't mean I'm not open to to clearly, you know, having more experiences. But course, it, it yeah. was um, or rather is, uh, as you say, life changing. So you mentioned that you um, that it, in your all your relationships improved. So tell me a little bit more about that. How, mm. how did it manifest for you? Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> everything just changed. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I think in the realization that I was making things up, um, not for the first time, but for the first time definitively, I saw myself no longer as a victim to my surroundings or my environment, including the relationships that I was in. Mm -hmm. So the, the most profound change um, was actually around my dad which is a little bit cliche, but I think oftentimes it's around close family members. Mm -hmm. And um, so one of the first people that I sort of did some coaching with was Jack Pransky. So after this experience with Jack and I remember speaking to him as I was trying to make sense of um, this new way I felt about my dad. And I, was, I remember saying to him that, uh, you know, like I, I've forgiven him, you know, and, uh, and yet I'm holding on to this 5% there was still this 5% that I couldn't forgive. And I remember saying to Jack, well, I'm holding on to this 5% so that if something goes wrong or if something doesn't pan out the way I want it to, I can still point at him. No, you know. And I remember Jack saying, uh, you know, he's innocent, right? And then he paused and then he said, and so are you. And there was something in that moment that freed me from, it freed me from relying on anyone else for my own happiness. It freed me from um, thoughts of constraint. It, it freed me from um, seeing my dad as the mm, antagonist in my life. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that sort of, um, you know, permeated every relationship that I had. It was just so easy to, to see my own silliness at times, say with a partner, with, with a, with a son or with a daughter, I have one of each. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there was something in the way that, in, in what Jack said, that just liberated me from um, a dependency in my relationships. So it's, it's like, I mean, maybe the best way to articulate it is that in that moment, you know, that was the last vestiges of what I was holding on to post this experience. And so this is weeks after I had my experience and talking mm -hmm. to Jack and it just, it, it was liberating yeah. to know that I'm whole and nothing can touch that wholeness. And that wholeness doesn't depend on anything. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was just fascinating. I mean, in a practical sense, the way it manifested is that, you know, I, I, so let's see, we're six years ago ish. So my son is 14 at the time. So I don't know where you at with, or with kids. Anyway, 14 year old. I have, I have two, I have two boys. <laughs> so, so, you know, so 14 year old boys are, are starting to um, mature, let's say as into being men and, and all of the challenges mm -hmm. that come with that. And one of the most practical things that I saw, so the way my, my view of relationships changed is that I started to recognize that I didn't need to have to do things in my relationship with my son in what I perceived to be my terms. So if my son didn't do something that I asked him to do, I didn't need to address that 
in the moment that I felt it needed to be addressed because inevitably in that, not inevitably, but in that moment where I felt the need to address something is a moment where I was lacking in my ability to do so. Mm -hmm. So from a practical perspective, what I was able to do is take a step back, kind of file away whatever it is, you know, the dad, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, okay, I got to, at some point I got to talk to the boy about this. And inevitably it would come up later at some point when we were both in a good place, there was no pressure to parent. It was just Mm -hmm. now I'm with my son and oh, by the way, do you remember last week when I asked you to do that? Mm -hmm. So, so from a practical perspective, my relationships changed in the sense that I didn't have to hold them as strongly anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I was able to be, I, I hope, I hope I'm articulating this well, but I didn't, I didn't have to, I didn't have to be the initiator of dialogue in the moment that I thought it had to happen. Yeah. So it was that ability to step back from my thinking and kind of go, okay, wait a minute. You're not feeling so good. You're, there's stuff that is pointing to you not being in the right mind to handle this well and, and being able to stop. Yeah. So, so from a practical perspective, that, that's, that's been such a game changer. And, and you know, my, my partner and I sort of joke with one another. Uh, in fact, she asked me the other day, if, if, if with this new understanding, would you be able to be with anyone? And pheromones aside Mm -hmm. (laughs) the answer might be yes because my ability to relate to people has changed so dramatically yeah you know no i I love what you're saying and it's it's i find exactly the same with with my children my children are now young adults but Mm. um the same thing after i came across this understanding that sort of knee-jerk reaction to as you say sort of parent in the moment just sort of fell away and I was very present to oh you know my son is sort of out of sorts right now this is probably not the best time to address this and equally and equally so I I just naturally relaxed so much that I had that perspective I had that wisdom to say yeah exactly like you said maybe at a later date um it, it can be addressed but I knew enough to not address it in that moment Mm -hmm. and what was so interesting is by me being um, less reactive my children were then able to come to me before I'd even addressed it with them saying things like you know gosh mom I'm sorry I I was a bit snappy there and I was like oh my god if I'd only known this years ago (laughs) you know you give people the space to settle and they there is nothing to defend they don't have to defend themselves they can just be pure and and come from that loving space. Yeah, I, spot on, Dell. And and uh, I can share a quick little story around that. Um, this was a few years ago now. So my son is now twenty. He might have been seventeen or eighteen years old. So he's been around this principles talk since I discovered it in twenty fifteen. And we had had an argument, and I wasn't I wasn't joining in with him, and he was mad saying all kinds of stuff and I just wasn't engaging I was like yeah okay you're out of sorts and you know he stomped away went over to a friend's place whatever I I don't remember exactly what it was and I was down in the basement and uh this is probably an hour later he had left angry left angry and he came back wow where'd you come from what do you what do you I thought you were gone he came up to me and he said you know and he gave me a big hug and he said you know you you didn't deserve to be treated the way that I treated you. So this is not about me. This is about the fact that he realized mm-hmm. in that moment that he was out of sorts. Yeah, I didn't have to do anything other than not engage. So as you said, I gave him the. Sp- I was able to give him the space to reflect on how things had gone, and he actually left his friend's place to come back and say, "Dad, I'm sorry. I love you." And that was it. And then he left again. It was, it was just, it was absolutely beautiful. Isn't it amazing? Gosh, if we only knew that earlier, <laughs> to quote, oh, <laughs> to <yeah>. quote Jack, <laughs> if somebody yeah. had only told us that, that when we first started right. being parents, you know. That's right. Yeah, somebody should have told us. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, that's so great. It is, it's so beautiful. Well, um, I just, um, 
I could talk about this all day with you, yeah, um, yeah, parenting <laughs> and, and, and relationships and things like that. But um, I also want to, you, you have, um, you are doing some things with Dominic Scavidi. And I know you're doing a program together. It's called Journey to Coaching Mastery. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm just curious, before you tell us a little bit about that, how, how much does the law of attraction, because I know Dominic is, is very immersed in that, how much mm -hmm. does that um, come into play with your coaching? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good if it does at all. Yeah, good, 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 good question. Way to put me on the spot there with something I don't feel that comfortable with. Though, good job. Okay, um, we can move on. No, no, no. I'll, I'll give it a whirl. I'll okay. A whirl. Um, so the way that I see, it, and and I am, you know, very much in my infancy in my understanding of of law of attraction. Um, you know, I, I met Dominic a number of years ago uh, online. He works occasionally in the city that I live in. So, you know, he would reach out to me and we'd go have a coffee and I'd, I'd pepper him with questions. Um, so, wow. law of attraction is becoming for me a bookend to the principles. Mm -hmm. So where the principles are purely spiritual and, 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 and for me, are, are um, represent a spiritual awakening, if you will. I, I don't know how else to, to term it. And the law of attraction is more, okay, so you've got that. Now what do you do? How do you bring that into form? Mm -hmm. So um, how that impacts my coaching is, is the two things together What they've enabled me to see is that the person that I'm sitting across from, as I'm sitting across from you, I, I'm able to see you as the miracle that you are, right? Full of potential, full of possibility, and, and fully able to create anything that you want. So I typically in my coaching don't share the three principles, and I certainly don't share a lot of attraction, but what they provide for me is um it's like it's like i can sit in those two understandings and from that place i can see the person i'm coaching so mm -hmm. it's not that they've they've opened up my own potential and in opening up that potential on the spiritual side and then on the how it works kind of side um, i'm able to see the people that i work with through those eyes mm -hmm. I've, I've never, that's the first time I've, I've sort of articulated both of them together. Yeah. So, um, I, you yeah. did an excellent job. <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, that really, no, it really made sense to me. It's like, you know, when we're, when we're sitting with somebody, we, we don't sort of say, oh, by the way, there's, there's this thing called gravity and, you know, you're, you're safe here because you're not going to fall off, you know, or, or, or whatever, you're not going to fall off the planet. Up, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no need to articulate it. But as you say, when we understand things from that perspective, it's just the grounding. And, and then what we do from that place, but we don't have to describe it. So I, I hear you saying that it influences how, how you see the person you're coaching in front of you and their unlimited potential who they are and what they're able to create so that, that's beautifully beautifully stated yeah it, it, it really has thank you it, yeah it really has it, it you know it, i'm gonna i'm gonna borrow something that dominic said to me a while back and he asked me this question what is it that i'm looking for or what are, i don't remember exactly how he took how he articulated but what is it that i'm looking to get from my clients mm -hmm. and my trained coaching mind went what are you talking about i'm not trying to get anything from my clients i don't understand this question mm -hmm. so i finally asked him and he said what he's looking for to get from his clients is the moment he falls in, into love with them mm -hmm. and that in a nutshell, is what I'm looking for and what, what, the, what the seat that I have as a coach looks like to me. That was a little clumsy, I realized. No, that, I, I 
completely understand what you're saying and that's beautiful absolutely i trained at a place called the university of santa monica and that was the the first thing the first tenant of coaching was was really seeing the loving essence in the other person mm -hmm. before anything and yeah. I'm, I'm hearing that that's that's that is an intention is to see the loving essence yeah and and, and it's interesting because when i first came across the principles um, before i'd done any sort of coach training it was all about sharing the principles sharing the principles talk about the principles i, I was one of those evangelical people that everyone <laughs> hates right <laughs> And um, so a little bit of coach training actually helped level that out. So it's not about sharing the principles with the person I'm working with or, or law of attraction, it's embodying it. Mm -hmm. And then the view that I have from that place of embodiment is quite powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Because right? you're working with someone who is all of a sudden unbreakable, unbroken, full of limits, limitless possibility and potential. What could possibly go wrong here? <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, let's let's sort it out. You know, there, there's no, uh, yeah, there's no, there's not a lot of effort there. Yeah, and and you know what's so beautiful? What I I often hear, which is, and it's not intentional. It's just the way it is, as you say. When you come from this grounding, you know, I, I'll have somebody will write to me and just say, "Gosh, you know, you you saw the healthy me when I couldn't see it." Yeah, and that. And that's that you can't fake that. That's not a that's not a thing you're trying to do. We genuinely we know under this thinking, we know who everybody is. That's right. And it's so easy to sort of hold that space as they as they go home or discover who they already are. So um no, I love what you described there. That is that is so true. It is, and it is a falling in love. I genuinely fall in love with my clients. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we're, if the working relationship sort of, you know, because we're coaching, it's not sort of ongoing like therapy. It's there. I. It's almost like I feel I have these children out in the world. You know? <laughs> I, I, I I've, I've got such a strong maternal instinct, but but there is this incredible love for these people that you work with. Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, and just. Uh, I don't really have anything to add to that, Della. It's yeah. beautiful. It's just, you know, when when you when you see people, when you begin to see people, the way you see yourself, mm -hmm. it, it's just it, it sounds arrogant, but everyone starts getting more and more beautiful. Everyone gets starts to become filled with more and more potential, and and. and you know, you, you might be describing a problem to me and that's fair for you to be doing that. Mm -hmm. It's not how I see it. Mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's, there's, there's such a, um, there's something really pure about being able to stay distanced or, or to stay in the moment of knowing the person is, you know, creative, resourceful and whole to throw out a cliche, even when they don't feel that way themselves. Yeah, it's almost like you can hold that space for them until they until they remember it again. Exactly. You know? exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, boy, we, <laughs> I, could, <laughs> right I should have booked you for for four four um, sessions here. <laughs> I could listen to you all day, um, but we we only have a few more minutes. So I just mm. want you to talk a little bit about. Um, I know you have these two programs coming up: the Journey mm -hmm. to Coaching Mastery yeah. and your Surviving to Thriving. So talk a little bit about those and what um, yeah. what is on offer. Yeah. So, well, the the um, journey to coaching mastery with Dominic Scafidi is uh, we launched it uh, last month, mm -hmm. and it is all about um, it's about giving three P coaches um, a bit of exposure or grounding in some some straight up coach coaching competencies. And to see that, you know, having a little bit of technical experience or a bit of skill or education under your belt is not a bad thing. And mostly what we're talking about in that program is about the harmony of the two, right? So an ICF competency list is not the enemy of coaching. Mm -hmm. It's an adjunct. It's helpful, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's, that's sort of that one. The, uh, the surviving to thriving um, has morphed actually a little bit. Uh, and it's a program that I'm going to be running out locally 
and I'm going to be working with a group called Circles Canada. Uh, they're in the U.S. as well, and what they do is they help lift people, individuals, out of poverty. So the the people that come in make a commitment to to uh, over three years removing themselves from any kind of social assistance. So the Surviving the Thriving program um, is actually going to be a small group facilitation uh, with some individual coaching. So that's going to be a sort of tertiary to um, these circles meetings where people that are interested are going to come in. They'll have the opportunity to talk to me about a whole variety of topics from you know, from the, we'll call it the esoteric. The, this is where I get to do a little bit of 3P teaching and mm -hmm. still keep a coaching hat on. And I get to juggle them a little bit more than I might with a, with a straight up coaching client. Mm -hmm. But that's essentially, uh, you know, what, what both of those programs are about. That's basically what I have going on right now, Del. That's, that's yeah. wonderful. I love the sound mm -hmm. of that. And I also do your, um, your, coaching the round table that's that's a free resource isn't it share a little bit about that i i, I can't make it live because i'm usually teaching on saturday mornings <laughs> right, myself right. but i do listen right. to the videos they're fascinating conversations oh, they, they are funny eh? so yeah that's uh that you know I, I, how did we get to where we are with that so it's the round table coaching life and the three principles and every other week we do a round table kaffa clutch and we have I mean, we're, we're international now. It's pretty cool. So anywhere from, you know, eight to 18 people on, and it's a very free form. Um, loosely, our topics are, are, are what's going well in your life. We really make an emphasis to stay away from complaining, to stay away from what's wrong and, and really try to, you know, come from the premise of what's better since the last time we spoke. Mm -hmm. so, so that's there and then i also have a slot um in the heartfelt presence room on mondays at five um yeah yeah good job on that on that <laughs> i forgot all about that Del. <laughs> I, I also that, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and you've got all this downtime i can tell so. oh yeah well you know i'm pretty good at managing that work-life balance is a, is a is an important thing for me yeah <laughs> Well, this has been lovely. It's been really, really lovely meeting you and, yeah, and having this chat with you. And um, yeah, you're doing amazing work in the world. So I hope know so. our paths will continue to cross. So. I certainly hope so, yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully in person one day when we start traveling again. Indeed, it, it, imminently, right? Hopefully. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, then we'll have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you so much for being with us. Uh, my pleasure, Del. Thank you so much for having me on. I very much appreciate it. Mm, me too. Thank All you. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If you're interested in learning more about my coaching and mentoring packages, please reach out to me at deladyjones at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you.